Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, let's pray. Father, I pray that you just be with us in this moment. I pray that you speak from the portals of heaven like you've never had before. Touch every heart, touch every mind, touch every spirit, God. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Uh, hey guys, today's sermon is called The Power of Tears. Uh, this title came to me when I was in church uh, last week. Um, the pastor ha had an emotional moment at the end of the sermon. And the Lord said to me, um, talk about the power of tears. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, Bishop T.D. Jakes said, oh, Bishop T.D. Jakes said, uh, when you're a, a leader, when you're, past, when you're a pastor, and when you're preaching, the sign of a great leader is when you can see yourself in the people that you're leading and you can see a bit of yourself and everyone coming down the aisle and when i saw this person break down a bit after after he was done preaching i i thought about that quote when bishop says said um it's he said it's easy to just preach and go on your way it's harder to see yourself and be kin to them struggle with them um to be to see your to see yourself with them but that he said that's the mark of a good leader when you can get into the um, trenches with who you're leading and empathize with them to say, I'm in it with you. And I thought when I saw this pastor book that break down, uh, not, not um, seriously break down, but he did have tears in his eyes and stuff and started uh, getting, um, having a moment of, of emotion, I thought of that quote, and I think that's cool, because um, it is, um, it is sad when a leader is so distant, whether it be a CEO, or whether it be a whatever leader you are um, that so so distant and so disconnected that they don't even know what's going on in their own companies. That's why I think the show Undercover Boss was so successful. And for those of you who don't know what Undercover Boss is, Undercover Boss was a show where big time CEOs um, would would take a break from their CEO job and really work the job of the frontline workers, and they would go undercover in their own company. And really to understand what people that worked for them did every day. And without fail, every single episode, the CEOs would come away with um, just a level of understanding that they wouldn't have before. And when 
they would when the CEOs would reveal that they were actually not trainees, that they were actually CEOs. Um, they would give the people that they were working with a prize. Or well, not a prize, but a gift or something. And without fail, every every time I heard this has changed the way I lead. This has changed the way I see things. When you can um, get out of your world and see things the way and begin to walk in the shoes of other people, it gives you an understanding and perspective that you wouldn't have had before. And I think that's really important to do before you judge anyone is to have a conversation with that person and or that people group to really understand what they're going through. And I think I think a lot of problems would be solved if we just had conversation and really understood what other people groups were going through before we judge um, the LGBT community or or the community of drug addicts or whatever um, or any anybody with any addiction or anybody that we want to judge we need to um, have the compassion enough to walk in their shoes anyway and, and to be able to understand who they are and to first see them as human before we see uh, their label, before we see what they're not, before we see them as the color of their skin before we see them as um, their sexual orientation we need to start seeing people as human anyway that is so not my sermon but the Lord wanted me to share that today so I was watching this um, church last week and the pastor broke down, so so the Lord said to talk about the power of tear, tears. Any, anyway, um, there's a difference. He was talking to me about this. There's a difference between showing emotion and being emotional. Um, Showing emotion is healthy. It's it's uh it's a necessity necessity um because what it does is it releases you and too many people are so bottled up um, because depending on the household you grew up in. Um, maybe your household showed too much emotion or, you know, not, not enough emotion and your father told you to, if you, if you want to cry, I'll give you something to cry about. Or, you know, you saw people getting emotional and they were living in their feelings. Showing emotion is natural. Having emotional moments like that pastor did last week, it's natural. It's a release. And um, it, it is 
it is a release and it is healthy and it is necessary. Um, and it, it also revives you. It releases you and revives you and uh, rejuvenates you and it renews you. So, like, because a lot a lot of people who don't show um, show emotions or having a hard time expressing expressing emotions or they suppress their emotions um, because your emotions have to go somewhere if you suppress your emotions or having emotional moments it will go somewhere and and um the lord is saying to anyone today who is suppressing their emotions and trying to make people happy just don't do it find a place find a safe place to let it out whether it be a friend, whether it be with a friend or with a therapist, showing emotions are totally healthy, and it's a necessity of life. Cr- crying is a release because what it does, it it gives your emotions an outlet, and sometimes. Times even the Bible says that that a broken and a contrite heart the Lord will not despise, and it also says He holds your tears in in a bottle, and He because He holds your tears in a bottle, He cares and understands when you have emotional moments when something gets to you or like when something really gets at your heart and for all the men out there it doesn't show weakness to cry i don't know where we got this that only women cry it's just not true actually for me as a woman when a man cries, it kind of shows strength because it shows me that he's okay with expressing uh, his um, feelings. And having emotional moments, as I said before, are completely are completely not um, are com are completely normal and natural and necessary because if you don't have emotional moments or or release those tears or release that pain or release that that frustration and tears your emotions will go somewhere It'll build and build and build and build and it'll need a release because your body cannot take all of that emotional pain. We were built to take all of that emotional pain. We were built for love. We were built for comfort. We were built to worship. We were built to um for community we weren't built to suppress our emotions speak so if you continually hide your emotions you may be okay for a while it's like a volcano it it may be okay for the first um a few years of your life but all of a sudden one day 
it'll release in some way that you're not expecting. And it may not release in anger or in tears. Those are two ways. But it may release, it may go into your substances. Uh, it may release in drinking. It may release in shopping. It may release in excess of something. Because your emotions will always go somewhere, whether it be outward or whether it be inward. So outward could be uh, through tears, as we talked about, through anger, through frustration, uh, through hurting those around you physically, emotionally, um, psychologically, um, spiritually even, um, and, or it could turn inward. It can go into your, into drinking alcohol. It can go into doing drugs. It can go into, like I said, shopping, gambling, gossiping. It can go into everything anything. It can go into a lack of trusting. If you don't deal with those emotions, it will kill you. If you don't cry, if you don't release that pain, release that frustration in a healthy way, it will literally and figuratively kill you. And the Lord wants you to know today, it's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. You're not alone. You're not a baby. You're human. And it's okay to have emotional moments. Saying that, however, it's not okay um, to be an emotional person where you live in your feelings all the time, where you're always, like, uh, offended, or you're always crying, or you're, you're doing it for attention, or something else is going on. When, when you are emotional, um, it's often a key that something else is going on and I would seek the Lord or I would get some counseling because if you're constantly emotional if you constantly have a short fuse or uh, live in the state of like crying all the time for the for uh, everything and not just emotional moments but you live inside your emotions there is a problem there is also something there that you're not dealing with you're the opposite of the people that I was talking about you use emotion to um, get your way or maybe manipulate people or maybe do something else that is totally unhealthy and you're not getting to the core of why you do it and you're just surviving on it you, you're just surviving on living with emo uh, living uh, emotionally and surviving on that kind of emotion, adrenaline all the time, is going to kill you as well. You need to get down to the core, not need, um, but the Lord wants you to get down to the core of why you, you live in your emotions. Why can't people talk to you? Why do you... Uh, cry at the um, when you know 
when people say something to you? Why do you get so angry? So that there are issues down there that today the Lord wants you to deal with because he wants you to to remain um, get free and remain free and the problem with with living in your emotions there are several problems with living in your emotions but one of the key uh, problems uh, is you you people don't want to be close to you and people um, people don't want to be close to you and 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 it's a way to keep people out and maybe that's when your issues maybe that's why you live in your emotions because um, people generally don't want to be around people that are crying all the time or getting angry all the time also it's good to show also it's healthy to show emotions but it's unhealthy to live in an emotional place all the time and the lord wants you free so either extreme is unhealthy whether you don't show emotions at all or whether you live in a place where you're just emotional all the time and the lord Lord is saying freedom freedom and you don't have to walk this way alone he say he's saying he wants you to acknowledge whatever place you are regarding your emotions and and to deal with that acknowledgement is the first step to healing without acknowledgement you cannot heal so the Lord wants you today to acknowledge wherever you are in your emotions on the emotional scale whether you don't show emotions at all or whether you live in your emotions and don't be afraid to be honest not only with God but with those around you and don't be afraid to get therapy or counseling because what therapy and counseling does it doesn't fix you but it can give you tools and perspectives um, because most therapists and counselors are trained in the human psyche and they can give you uh, tools and perspectives that you wouldn't have that you would otherwise have had and sometimes in therapy they let you come uh, to the to to know what you already know like they ask, they ask questions uh, to let to let you come to what you already know. So you have an assistant in your own freedom. So that's what I think of a therapist as, as assistance in your freedom. They don't make you free. They don't make you well but they can assist you in your own healing depending on the therapy you need depending on the type of counseling you need and that's why it's helpful if you need it to go to therapy and if you can't afford therapy um technical therapy find a friend find a pastor find a person that you trust to process with there is nothing like processing with a person the Lord so wants healing and restoration in your emotions today thank you Lord I praise you 
for what you're doing in this place today. I, I thank you for every spirit, every soul, every heart listening to me. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for just being our emotional compass, oh God. I thank you for guiding, restoring, healing, and doing uh, what you what you will um, restore, guide, and heal us in our emotions today. God, we need you in this area of our lives. Whether we whether we are suppressing emotions or whether we are um, just just living in emotional living in emotion living in an emotional place your wish above all things is that we prosper and be in health in the name of jesus i praise you and worship you in the name of jesus amen thank you guys i'll see you next week Many of you have been living under the mistaken impression that emotions are a sign of weakness. And the Lord wants you to rid wants you to be rid of that mistaken emotion today. And and freedom is available today for you. All you have to do is speak it. Speak it. Cry out to the Lord and say, I need healing. I need help. Show me the way. And he and he will. He's he's waiting for you today to cry out to him. To say that you need help. Thank you guys. Bye. And he also wants you to know you're not the only one dealing with emotional problems. You're not the only one. And there's no need to feel afraid or alone or like you're an idiot. He wants you to know that you're not an idiot. That we all have emotional places that we need fi fixing. And there's no shame in that. He said there's now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. He doesn't condemn you. He wants to restore you. He wants to help you. He wants you to live in freedom, not defeat. And whether you're repressing emotions or living in emotional living in emotional place, he wants you to live in freedom. He wants you to live the abundant life that he called for you to live. He doesn't want you to live in your mistakes and your past and self-doubt and self-recrimination. He wants you to live free. And the first way you live free is to let him come into your life and let him do what he wants with your life. And the simplest way to do that is to just say in your own words what you want him to do in your life. The Bible says, 
if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. He wants to save you today. He wants to be the lifeline today. He wants to he wants to restore every broken place and you don't have to walk it alone just just speak that you need him speak that you want him and use your own words a lot of pastors pray after people i don't do that because my belief is he wants to hear you speak and your words, whatever they are, are good enough. There does, there does, there's no magic to it. Just say, Lord, I need you. And if after you pray, you need more help, uh, feel free with next steps or whatever. Feel, feel free to message me. I will be so glad to help you. Take care. Don't be afraid to let it go. Don't be afraid to cry. Don't be afraid to let people, let God see your brokenness and let trusted friends see your brokenness. Any any person or any family member or any friend that loves you and that God has ordained will understand when you're broken and and will offer a helping hand and those that don't are not true friends or people you should be associating with you don't have to be afraid of your emotions just re release the pain you've been holding on to this pain for too long and the Lord says I want you to be free and who the Son sets free is free indeed and he wants you to know that he nailed every sin every shame every bad thing you've ever done to the cross and you don't have to after today pick it up again you've been walking around with it for too long and he wants you to be free today thank you lord i bless you and thank you for the freedom that you're giving your dear children today i praise you and i worship you and i celebrate the freedom you're giving your dear children today. Thank you, Lord. Okay, guys, I'm really going this time. Bye. Just open the floodgates and let it come out. Let the tears fall from your mother's death 20 years ago. Let the tears fall from that broken heart 10 years ago. Let it fall. Let it go. Pride, pride has no place in God. Just openness and brokenness and when you show your brokenness that gives god permission 
to put you back together. But if you're acting like everything's okay and you're just fine but you're broken, God doesn't have permission to put things back together. And the potter says he wants to put you back together again. He says he wants the life more abundantly that you've had before the broken heart. Just let it flow. Let it come out. You've been holding on to it for so long. You've been struggling with with this um, pain and this shame for so long. He wants you to let it go. Remember, release But once you release it, it can. Once you release the emotion, it can revive you. Once it revives you, it rejuvenates you. It gives you a strength that you never thought you would have. And once it rejuvenates you, it it renews you. But if you keep it bottled up and don't release it, all those other steps won't happen. You have to first release the emotion. Releasing the emotion um, brings about brings about um, uh, revival of yourself. And then revival brings rejuvenation. And rejuvenation brings renewal. And that's what releasing your emotion will do. For some of you, um, the reason why you feel so dead inside is that you um, you refuse or, or you're not releasing the tears that you need to release. You're not releasing the pain that you need to release. And he's saying, release it now. He's saying, release it now. Release it now. Thank you, Lord. I praise you for what you're doing in in the lives of your dear children. Okay, guys, I'm really going now. It's like a leaky faucet. Words keep coming. I want to sign off, but it keeps coming. So I will see you next week. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Remain blessed.